Hello, welcome to Tip Time with Moro. In this video, I'm gonna show you some advanced building techniques that you might not know in Timberborn. For this test, we have two separate districts that are completely mirrored in materials and goods. I imagine most of you are still aware that when you build stuff in Timberborn, that you can go from the top down. So if you wanted to build normally, you would build levees all the way down with dams on top to dam the server off. That would be the standard way of building and while relatively easy, it is also extremely slow compared to my system. They would have to build this bottom block, then that one, then that one, then that one, then that one. One at a time. They have to bring materials, then they have to build it. They have to bring materials, then they have to build it. And that takes a really long time. So my way of building that I figured out uses bridges to really speed this up. So this is my advanced bridge building speed system. In this game, beavers are able to build straight down from a bridge. So if you build a bridge first, you can go straight down and they'll actually build all four blocks at a time. And it'll speed up this whole construction by quite a bit. And I know what you're saying, I don't want to waste metal. That sounds expensive. Well, I don't know if you've noticed before, but bridges one, two, and three don't cost any metal. You don't have to take my word on this because we're going to do a nice little time-lapse race. I did set the bridge columns to high priority so that they would get those built first and then they'll just build out the rest of it. Now I can already hear you guys say, Moro, dude, this is a huge waste of materials. And you're not wrong, but sometimes in some situations, that's worth it. This technique is gonna be most effective later in the game. Once you have an excessive amount of builders and materials, that's really when your beavers can take advantage of it. Now that the wall is done, we delete the bridges and finish off with dams on top. And the taller the wall or dam that you're building, the more effective the system is. And not only that, but you were also able to actually dam the water off and block this area significantly faster. If we didn't have to worry about the top row, then we were already done. And there we have it. This wall is completely built and the other side still is not functional at all as a dam. My other technique is going to be about blowing holes in things. <laughs> Let's say you wanted to make a deep hole. On the left side, we're going to try and do it traditional style. And on the right side, we're going to do Moro style. And as I'm sure you're aware, doing the first level is always easy. They can just build it because they have access to the whole level. So once that's gone and you want to keep going, how do you do that? The traditional way would have you putting stairs, but on the other side, I'm gonna show you the Moro way, the fancy way, which is using bridges. Lots and lots of wasteful bridges. And once all those bridges are built, they're gonna be able to place dynamite underneath each bridge all the way down, as far as you wanna go. If you wanna go 20 levels, this system will work and you don't have to build stairs or platforms or any sort of weird, strange hijinks. So we took the left side down and now we need more stairs. More stairs, more dynamite, more weird stumps left over. We're just gonna keep going. We're gonna keep going while the right side does its own thing. Left side needs more stairs and then we could do dynamite. Right side, you just get to place them now. You just get to place them now. You don't have to worry about anything. And it's just easy. This tip is less about speed and more about just ease of playing. <laughs> You're spending a few extra resources to make your life easier going all the way down. If you're only going a few levels, you probably don't need to do this. But if you're going down four, five, six, seven, twenty levels, this will make your life so easy. I mean, just look, look at how awkward the left side's getting. And this is an ideal situation. This is an ideal situation for both. What if you have like the side of a hill that's all topsy-turvy and stuff and you're on top. If you're on top of the hill, you just stick the bridges out and you just go straight down, straight down, straight down, straight down. There's no problem. On, on a hill with weird little ledges and stuff, you're gonna have to build stairs that go left and right and zigzag and everything. And it's a horrible pain in the ass. And this is just easy. The other thing that I'd like to mention about this is that build range matters in this game. And the longer the path that you have to take to the bottom of the thing that you're blowing up, the more likely it is that at some point you might hit the end of the range of your builders and not even be able to build the dynamite. Whereas so long as you can reach the bridges on top, you're good. You're set. 
I mean, just look at this. Look at how awkward this whole thing is getting. And th this is a perfect square. Again, if this wasn't a perfect square and you didn't have full access all around and all the way down, this would just get more and more awkward and awful to build. I know you've been there. I know you've tried to deal with it. There's no way you don't see the benefit of the Moro system. Those are the two main ways that I've used bridges to my advantage when it comes to building. If you found this helpful, hit the like button and consider checking out my ongoing Timberborn series. This has been Tip Time with Moro, and I'll catch you guys next time.